earlier this, uh, this year, I was really lucky and I was invited to uh, the premiere performance of, uh, of uh, Ken Gass's new theatre company. Ken was, is a major figure in local theatre and Canadian theatre, was sidelined for a year or two because of some shenanigans at his previous theatre, but then recovered and came forward this year with a production of How Do I Love Thee? And I was so enchanted by it, and I was not the only one. In fact, the production is up for multiple Dora Awards, but I was so enchanted by it, I thought that a reading of the poetry that runs between Elizabeth Barrett and her famous husband, Robert Browning, would be a perfect and fitting way to bring this rather old-style morning to a close. So if I could call, um, where do I have the names? Yes, uh, Matthew Edison and Irene Poole. Where are they? Irene and Hi. Matthew. Thank you so much for doing this. Yeah. Thanks so much for doing this. Yeah. Good morning. We'll be presenting fragments from the Canadian Repertory Theatre production of How Do I Love Thee? Written by Florence Gibson MacDonald, directed by Ken Gass. My name's Matthew Edison. I'll be playing Robert Browning. Irene Poole, Elizabeth Barrett Browning. Dear Miss Barrett. I love your verses with all my heart, and I love you, too. I've been turning and turning of what to tell you of their effect on me. So into me they have gone, and part of me they have become. This great, this great living, living poetry, poetry of, of yours. yours. I thank you, dear Mr. Browning, for such a letter, and from such a hand. Sympathy is very dear to me, but the sympathy of a poet, and such a poet, is the quintessence of sympathy to me. Let me return the compliment forthwith, because of all the commerce in the world, none flows so free between friendly states as the currency of praise and admiration. Oh, my dear Mr. Browning, my small worth pays poor return in comparison to yours. Oh, dear, dear Miss Barrett, you do me a kindness I don't deserve, for my grievous poetic faults are many, whereas you... Oh, Mr. Browning, not a flower do you plant that does not take root and grow within the very heart of my desire for your words. You rise above above such prosaic soil as mine to build a castle out of dreams. My castle can't provide the substance you require. On the contrary, yours is the very foundation I seek. If indeed it's in that structure you reside. Alas, Mr. Browning, it's the subtext eludes me. <sighs> and me. Indeed, my ink trails off in silence at the bottom of the page, and I wonder sometimes if anyone can hear me. Rest assured, Mr. Browning, it's yourself in others to whom you speak. But am I welcome to Intrude. Oh, I long for you to intrude yourself. The muscularity of your lines, the, the throbbing of your meter, the extension of its power as you take art to such a length, I can scarcely circumscribe its thrust, and yet I feel it here. Where? Here. In Pippa Passes, for example, mm. where you describe the lover's secret meeting in the woods, the bright shaft burns through the bush, as if God himself plunged and plunged his weapon at their tryst, till the skies break open, and the great expanse of their love in perfect poetical pitch and potency comes. <laughs> Is it like that for you? Oh, yes. When it comes, it comes like that for me. <sighs> Byron would have it that love destroys the beloved. Uh, Keats proved him wrong on a point so small as a Grecian urn. Robert Browning will silence them all with his massive body of work. Oh, I love the way you write the R in Robert. Oh, and you have perfected B and A. Ba. Robert. Dear Ba. Dear Robert. Dearest, dearest My dear, ba. dearest Robert, Robert, Robert. The ink that falls from your pen is gold, whereas mine reveals nothing but my poor, mean self from every angle. I'll show you my ink blots if you show me yours. <laughs> I can't. My ink blots are here in a shambles on the floor. Well, I'll come Tuesday week and collect them. No. No, Mr. Browning, that's not possible. Why? Are you out? No, I'm always in, but... Well, then it's arranged. No, I'm not into... to, to, to viewing, to visitors. I see no one. I could see you. You see me as I am, no more than the sum of all my scribblings. It's 
that there's nothing to be gained by coming Tuesday. Well, uh, an honor. So you go. You go. No, you, you, no, really. No, really you, you were saying. saying <laughs> <laughs> I've exhausted you. Just a spell, a contretemps. <laughs> Please. Uh, the frost, the etchings it makes on the window are like etchings on the window from <laughs> frost. Yes. I... Well, that... Miss Barrett. Bar. Mr. Browning. Robert. Bar. I'm not what you expected, am I? You are more than the height of every... No, not with words. Not with words at all. Poetry is an insurmountable obstacle when it comes to finding the right words at last. And yet it was poetry that ensured we would meet. Yes, poetry, our chaperone. We're leaving. We're running away. To Italy. Italy. Italy! We'll steal away in the dead of night. Her father will never know. We'll live like kings. Queens. Poets. poets. On pomegranates. On love. 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 Robert, my Robert, come to me. I, I am, only these drastic trousers. We both know the length whereof our love will take us. Primal creature to the sea, in whose touch shall be my own discovery. Uh, I just, um... Sleek fish, devoured of ourselves, slip neatly into the silvery bay to lap my shores in ancient ways and leave your body in my bones. Okay. <laughs> Comes our maiden voyage, both at sea and on fire, to ride the ocean swell and crest her peaks, crash upon my open shores, rock the ships on the ocean's floor, sound and surface a timeless roar, till you shatter my soul, take wing and soar to the depths of an ocean's longing. Ride my waves, rival the seas, flood my heart, bring love to her knees, then our wings will break in fire, flaming passions beat desire, till dawn the candlelight expires. And come and oh, and come and come and come and come and I have to write that down. <laughs> um, Bar, darling, never mind. All right, it's only. Um, if I close my eyes, visions of angels persist. <laughs> bah, I... Robert, what is it? I'm writing. Bah, we've been here one month, and we've gone through all the money. Uh, the, the thing is, all this month's money went to the apothecary. The chemist, he's got it, all of it. That's not possible. Well, that's what I said. We couldn't possibly. Us? But Wilson, she signed for it, for you, for laudanum, morphine, and ether. It, it was the strain of the trip. Those horses, that ship, yes. they required more of me than I've ever been accustomed. You just ask Wilson. My delicate, my dove, I understand, will say no more about it because there'll be no need. It'll never happen again, will it? Robert, you have my word. And you know what words mean to me. Does he love me? Loves me not. What is love? It's all you've got. Darting eyes that see every opportunity. Don't. <sighs> Don't let the dark days in. I'll have tea. 
with eyes as big as saucers. You hate tea. All right, then just sit. Oh, just sit, 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 and write. Ba, you promised and you lied. You said you would follow the program I laid out for you, and obviously you haven't, to the letter. I've started my new collection. I'm going to earn my living by writing. Are you? You know I can't. Not when I have to spend all my time worrying about you. Well, don't. Be like me and know that the work will suffice. It does not suffice. When we are all out of money, you'll be all out of that. That is not going to happen, because I'm going to pay my own way. Why weren't you like this when I married you? I was. You deceived me. Tried to warn you. Oh, most cryptically. Oh, most poetically. So just what is this you're writing? It's a moral poem calling for a repeal of the Corn Laws. The Corn Laws? The scandalous laws that are a crime against the poor of England and not to be struck down. I find it ludicrous, you dipping your big toe in the political arena. If I'm to understand you correctly, do you think the poet needs a firmer grasp if she is to wrestle larger themes to the ground. Absolutely. How else can she expect to get a handle on politics if she can't get a hold on her own life? Ooh, easy. Ah, ah. <laughs> so, she wishes to prove she has the upper hand, does she? She demonstrates that she does. What if her power is an illusion? What if the power of others <laughs> is superior? What if she doesn't recognize other forms of power? <laughs> 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 Like fair play, because it's clear she refuses to play by the rules. Well, show me one line of poetry written by Robert's rules. Would she like gloves off <sighs> and no holds barred? Oh, you know she would. Maybe she'd like him to put her out of her misery. Yes. Maybe he'd like, she'd like yes. him to strangle her to death. Yes, 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 yes. I don't want to hurt you. Yes, you do. Yes, I do. Oh, I, you'd I, like I, to kill me. I would, I would, I could kill you. Don't kill me then. No. Right now. No. Brute, tyrant, no. despot, no. barbarian. No. Oh. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Beautiful. So beautiful. Ah. Is there nothing I can get you? Nothing you need, my keepsake, my dove? Nothing, my own sweet. I've completed my collection. Collection? An entire collection of brand new poems. Brand? Well, that's uh, something. You didn't think I could do it, did you? Under the influence, as I am. Surely you don't wish me to attribute your accomplishments to the influence? Of course not. In that case, my darling, do. You don't need it. It is, however, my treacle. The foundation on which all of my other needs Part rest. Eight. It's time we built a new foundation, exclusive of all other props. One that includes my bedrock. Oh. Face it! You have an unnatural dependency. Nonsense. My dose is exquisite of nature herself. Oh. Is it natural to lie in bed until one? Faint and thin and ill-defined. Isn't that what you like best about me? My vaguely consumptive disappearing self. Excuse me, but I know what I like, and I like a woman to appear capable. I'm not capable of anything with you watching my every move. It's a wonder I can write at all. You lied to me about who you are. Oh, let's talk about deceit. Let's look at the poet who has no poems. I wish you were a cripple, a consumptive, anything, anything but this. Everything you've ever said has been a lie. Your father, daddy is a hoax. You dangled all this time. Did he know about this? Well, of course he did, but he never told me. How could he? He never met well, me. Divorce me then and send me back. I thought it was him you didn't want me to face, but it was yourself, your own real self, saying it was him. It was him! And now it's you! You, you are your father. You're the ogre. <laughs> Suffocating, stifling, stultifying. <laughs> There's a serpent inhabits that tree where passions devour the flesh in a sacrament of souls. And the open eye of a dead man is glaring down at me 
as I cradle his head and kiss his brow, and long that he might open up the hillsides with flowers to walk amongst their wondering, how do I love thee? Let me count the ways. I love thee to the depth and breadth and height my soul can reach when feeling out of sight for the ends of being and ideal grace. I love thee to the level of every day's most quiet need by sun and candlelight. I love thee freely as men strive for right. I love thee purely as they turn from praise. I love thee with the passion put to use in my old griefs. And with my childhood's faith, I love thee with the love I seem to lose with my lost saints. I love thee with the breath, smiles, tears of all my life. And if God choose, I shall but love thee better after death. You're beautiful. You're magnificent. Your sonnets, they must be published. No. For the world. No, I, they're, they're yours. I wrote them for you. Wrote them before I ever met you. But you knew me. Only in letters. And wasn't that me? No. Nor was it me. Do you think so little of me now? Oh, Robert. Of our life together? Oh, don't. I give my life to you. You mustn't. I do. I'm not worth it. I wouldn't be here if I thought that. If I didn't think you were capable of all things. Capable of stopping you. You mustn't ask me to choose between you because I can't. I won't. The sonnets are a testament to that. But, but we have to publish No, them. we don't have to do anything. We, if we were to publish, no. there would be money. No. Money. For, I'm not thinking of myself only, but my shame at not being able to provide and honor to be so loved. To see your work recognized would be to take you out of yourself and into the world. Maybe they will bring you back to me. Thank you. Thank you.